Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us here today. I got to say, this is a great event. So one of our mottos at Corning is always innovating. And so to come to an event like this, the festival is focused on innovation, I'm very excited. I also want to take a minute to acknowledge one of our largest customers in India, Xiaomi. They're so focused on their Mi community and delivering a great user experience. So it's no wonder that they have a wide range of durable phones with Gorilla Glass on the front and the back. So, Anij, thank you for the strong thank you. partnership. Now, as John mentioned, Corning's been working and failing with glass for almost 170 years. And glass has actually been around for over 2,000 years. It's one of the most ubiquitous materials on the planet. And yet it's often overlooked and taken for granted. For example, many of you may have been in the shower looking through your glass window. Or maybe you've had your favorite drink this morning in a glass cup. But when you drove here, you looked through your glass windshield. Or some of you are looking at me now through your eyeglasses. And all of us touch our smartphone and the, the glass that's on there thousands of times a day. So the question I have for you is why is glass used in all those applications? And really to understand that, you have to understand what problem you're trying to solve and why glass solves some of those problems. So to, be, to help with that a little bit, I thought it'd be good to look at where does glass come from? It's basically sand. It's, it's, it's some of the most abundant raw material on the Earth's crust. And we take it and we dig it out of the Earth, we put it into big tanks, and we melt it at 2,000 degrees Celsius. It's about 80 or 90 percent made of silicon dioxide. And then we add in other elements from the periodic table that give it certain properties or different colors. It's almost like a chef taking different Indian spices and creating different foods and different tastes. And that's basically how you create different compositions of glass. Now, once you get the glass into the right ratios, you're left with a optically transparent and pure material. And that's fundamentally the first problem glass is trying to solve. You want a transparent material. That's what the reason we cut holes in our houses and put windows in there so we can see outside. And when you think about it, there's very few materials that are transparent. And that's what glass is trying to solve. Now, you can make this glass so pure and that's what Corning did when it invented ultra-loss optical fiber, basically the glass that powers the internet. Now that glass is so pure that if you were to fill the Indian Ocean, you'd be able to see the ocean floor miles below. Isn't that amazing? It's such an invention. Now glass solves many other problems, as John mentioned. It's thermally stable, so it can withstand wide ranges of temperatures, and it's the reason it's used on all the manned space missions in the United States. It's also chemically stable, and it's the reason you have a lot of your medicines and your vaccines are stored in glass vials. And lastly, it can be a fantastic design and artistic tool because you can shape it and craft it. Now, one of the next problems we're trying to solve with glass is how do we prevent glass from being fragile and breaking? Now, to do that, you really have to understand how, why materials fail. And they basically fail in two ways. One is under compression, like if it's, as if you're trying to break eggs, or in tension, as if you're trying to bend a piece of wood and snap it in half. Now, glass is extremely strong under compression. In fact, it's stronger than steel and stronger than concrete. It has a theoretical compressive failure of 15 gigapascals. Now, none of us have a scale at our house that can measure a pascal, but one pascal is as much as 10,000 elephants. So glass is an amazing material when it comes to compressive stress. The challenge, though, is how do you get glass that can withstand not only compressive stress, but also tension stress? When you bend glass, it's going to break. And that's what our scientists do every day, is they break glass. They're trying to understand the fracture mechanics, the failure modes, and different, different crack propagations. And I encourage all of you to go to the Gorilla Glass Sandbox and see firsthand how we break glass and how we build some of those tests and talk to some of our experts. So 
Corning analyzes glass at the molecular level. We're always trying to understand the chemistry and the fracture mechanics that are behind it. And what Corning developed was two, two innovations. The first was a very specialized glass composition, choosing the right elements from the periodic table that create a very strong glass. And then we also invented a chemical temp tempering process that allows you to take advantage of that compressive stress, that inherent capability in glass. Now, when you bring both of those together, you now have a glass that's not only strong in compression, but it's also strong in tension. And we call that glass Gorilla Glass. Now, we still drop our phones every day, right? And the next time you do that and you bend down and you pick it up and you look at it, and you have that fear of dread. Did it break? Did it not? When it doesn't break, you can thank a small little company in upstate New York that we helped solve that problem too.